Hey guys, if you like the content, please be sure to like the videos and subscribe to the channel. Thanks. Hey guys, Alex from SeemsGoodMagic.com here doing Born of the Gods 8-4 drafting. So, uh, just quick reminder, check out the Seems Good Magic card giveaway series uh, for this week, and also check out the Mortar Pod for this week, too, our podcast. Uh, I'd appreciate and hear comments on those, so, uh, yeah, look forward to that. Okay, let's do the draft here. We open Eidolon of Countless Battles, which I think I'm okay with picking. That, that card's pretty good. Uh, it's got Bestow. It's basically a Crusader of Odric plus gets plus one for each aura you control. I really like the I, I really like this card a lot. Um, Mischief and Mayhem is also very good. Fall of the Hammer, good. Servant of Timurit, it's cool. Um, I think it's really it's Mischief and Mayhem or Eidolon, and I think there's definitely enough upside to Eidolon where we want to take it here. But being able to bestow this is really cool. So pretty happily snatch that card up and see what we can get next. Okay. So, good cards in here. I definitely like the Ghostbait Eidolon. It seems to fit perfectly with our first pick, too. Crow and Phalanx is good. Uh, Excoriate's playable. Nyxborn Rolliker, also playable. Quite a few playables in here. We're just going to take the Eidolon. It's uncommon. It's very strong. Um, hope to wheel maybe Excoriate, but that might not happen. More likely wheel the Dreamfinder, since this tends to go so late. And I think I can actually uh, be happily taking that card in this deck. Already our first two picks are targets for it, so let's go ahead and do that. Alright, next we have Elite Skirmisher, who is good. Eternity Snare, which in this format I think is very strong. Now, yes, it's a six mana, you know, just make a guy not able to untap. But you get to cantrip off of it, and keep in mind there's all sorts of bestow in this format, so this card becomes a lot better. Uh, but I think we're just going to take the Skirmisher, stay on point with that, since Skirmisher is actually very good, especially with a couple bestow guys already. Um, anything else in here that's decent? Yeah, a couple other ones. Um, I like the uh, I like Sphinx's Disciple. I like Snake of the Golden Grove. I think they're both fine. Sky Reaping is good sideboard. And like I said, Eternity Snare is very strong. But let's take the Skirmisher. Let's start that. Okay, so we've got Mortal's uh, Ardor, which is good if we get any uh, Heroic White. We've got Swordwise Centaur, Nyxborn Triton, Divination, uh, Thunderbrute, who I think is actually pretty big beater. He's either a 6-mana... 5-5 five, five, Trample Haste, or a 6-mana 8-8 eight, eight, Trample. Both of those seem really well-priced. Uh, but, um, I like the, I, I think I like the Mortal's Ardor the most. It's a good combat trick, and it can be super swingy with the lifelink. It also triggers any heroic that we may or may not get, so, just beyond Elite Skirmisher. So I like it, and I think we're going to take it. I don't, I don't mind Swordwise Centaur so much either, but um, for now let's just let's just pluck White up, pack one, and really let people really indicate to everybody that we are indeed snatching up as much White as possible. Uh, Raised by Wolves, still want to try that card. I really like this card a lot. Feel like it does a lot of things. Puts a, just a ton of power on the board for a good price. Um, so I could take that over the second Skirmisher, but I I don't know. I'm kind of thinking the Skirmisher is still still where I want to be. I don't know, though. This Think about this card, actually, with Eidolon. That's a huge upside. If green's open, that could, that could really help this deck a lot, I think. Um, I mean, second Skirmisher is very good, too. But let's go for Raised by Wolves. It's certainly, I think it's certainly stronger than Elite Skirmisher, and especially with the Eidolon that we already have. So let's let's try that out and see if green is, in fact, open. Um, okay, so if it is, we can take the Oathsworn here, and that's actually fine, because we already have uh, four things to target it with. So I like that. Otherwise, Mortal's Art, our number two, is fine. And actually, Springleaf Drum. I wanted to try that, too, for inspired purposes. 
eventually. But yeah, let's let's definitely just take the old sworn. That guy's good. Okay, so we did actually table excoriate and dreamfinder. I think we want the excoriate a little bit more. Um, green white typically doesn't have a lot of removal, and excoriate is just an acceptable one for a deck like this that doesn't look super aggressive, but looks like we can get some uh, omega value if we find the right times. That also is an argument for Dreamfinder, but I, I think just Excoriate is more in line with what this deck wants to do. Um, okay, so now we can do Wayfinder, Greatheart, Culling Mark. None of them are very good. Wayfinder has a potentially positive upside if we see any Nemesis of Mortals. Um, or if we just need to be fixed. Uh, I don't like Culling Mark very much. I don't think that card's good. I don't think Greatheart's good either. None of our three picks here are really all that good. But we do want to definitely continue to cut the colors that we're in. Um, I guess we can take the Greatheart. I think Greatheart's actually the most playable out of those three. Alright, we can take another Mortal's uh, Ardor. We can also take Karametra's Favor, but I think Ardor number two is going to get us buy us more time which we definitely want, so let's do that. Alright, so we did table the Dreamfinder. Happily going to take that and likely play it in here. Seems like something that would benefit us greatly. A lot of good things to return. Um, let's take the Sky Reaping. Well, I mean, it doesn't look great in here. I mean, both of these definitely help it, but otherwise we're just taking a Radiance, which isn't good, or a Charging Badger, which isn't good, so... Let's take the Sky Reaping. I don't even have any Legends, so... Couldn't even do anything with that card if I wanted to. Uh, Hold at Bay is, in fact, a combat trick, so okay. Um, let's take the Radiance here, I guess. And Sanguimancy, okay. That card's actually decent. Alright, so a pretty solid pack one. I mean, I think I know... We have a pretty good idea what we're doing prefer to not main deck a few of these cards. Wow, Prognostic Sphinx is strong. Uh, but what else have we got in here that's good? We've got Hopeful Eidolon, uh, Feral Invocation, Nessian Asp. All of those are good. Nessian Asp is very, very good. I like that card a lot. We seem to be a bit mid-rangey, so... Um, I mean, I could see this being of great benefit in this deck. Uh... It's got to be the strongest. I mean, Feral Invocation is amazing because it doubles as a, a really good heroic trigger, but also a solid combat trick. So it's debatably Feral Invocation here, but I think I am going to go with the Asp. I just like what this card can do in terms of reach and, and late game winning, stuff like that. It is a 5 drop, though. Um... So I don't want to get too heavy on the end game, but I definitely want to make sure I have enough win conditions in here. I really do like Feral Invocation a lot. Okay, well, let's take the Asp. I, I think I, I can get behind that pretty easily. Okay, now we have a uh, choice between Nylea's Disciple, Warrior's Lesson, Voyaging Satyr, Savage Surge. I think we can... We only have seven creatures, but I think we can take the Warrior's Lesson... Uh, Another heroic trigger card. And uh, just good. Drawing cards is good. Activating two heroic can be really good. We still have a chance to see some more, you know, Wingsteed Riders or um, uh, Favorite Hoplites. Just just all the white and, and then the Centaur Battlemaster, Staunch Hearted Warrior. There's some chance that we see some more heroic stuff. So, And then green card advantage. I think it's just solid. Hopefully we wheel the Voyaging Seder, but otherwise Calvary Pegasus or Savage Surge is fine, probably too. I guess uh, Pegasus isn't great in here, but there's definitely some humans that we could run into. Okay, now we have Lagana Band Elder, Satessan Battle Priest. Uh, we may just want the Battle Priest good defensively. We're already mid-rangey. It's more heroic. It's probably better than Lagana Band Elder. 
just because we don't have any cheap creatures yet. So, it's a Tessin Battle Priest in a vacuum, not that great of a card. Some real good black in here. But for this deck, I think it's certainly playable. Wow, Prophet of Crufix. Um, this card's definitely strong enough where I'm not going to regret trying to splash for it, I don't think. So why don't we cut the... Let's, I mean, otherwise we're just taking Hopeful Eidolon, which is definitely good, but let's go for Profit. That, that's, a, that's a huge, huge card. Wow, Fleece Man Lion? That's some... That's a great uh, pass there. Uh, also Staunch Hearted Warrior, but I think we're actually going to go with Fleece Main Lion. I mean, how do you deal with a 4-4 four, four Hexproof Indestructible when I get that, you know? Staunch Hearted I would have loved to have grabbed. Even Battlewise Valor would have been good. But yeah, Fleece Main Lion, that's fantastic. Okay. Um, not too much here. Commune with the Gods. Uh, I mean, a lot of enchantments to find. We might just take the Unknown Shores to help Splash for the Prophet. That could help. So let's let's do that. Uh, okay, now we can do Hedonist or Last Breath. Uh, we're kind of in need of more creatures, but Last Breath is actually good defensively. It's good offensively. You know, what's kind of cool is you can... Last Breath of Satessa and Oathsworn, and then it turns into a 3-3, three, three, so it's like a buff spell for that, which is kind of cool. But yeah, you can use it defensively, you can use it offensively, buys you time for sure. Let's do the Last Breath. Okay, now we have Shredding Winds which I think we are going to take. Good sideboard option at our disposal here. I don't think we want to main deck it, or this, or this really. Um, prefer to not main deck that, but I can in a pinch. Uh, let's take the Unicorn. That's going to help Splash for Profit as well. Otherwise, Ray of Dis Dissolution is good, and Hunt the Hunter is a fine sideboard. But let's definitely take the Opaline Unicorn here. All right. Um, so we can take the Pegasus, makes this fly, and it makes this guy fly, and it makes Prophet fly, but, uh, I think we're just going to go with the Savage Surge, really going to have to focus fire on creatures in, out of the next pack, I think I'd rather play the Fade than the Artisan Sorrow, even though this is instant speed, I think Fade's probably a little bit better, uh... Just in case we don't end up with enough playables for some reason, I'll take that. Okay, so we're on to the last pack. It looks like we are going to dip into blue for Prophet of Crufix. So I don't regret that. I think that's... With Unknown Shores and Opaline Unicorn, I think we could even get away with one island and, and be good. Um, Alright, so really just need to focus on getting creatures out of this pack, but uh, I actually like the kill, the kill cons we currently have. Could use some more removal as well. Alright, well, we've got a Wingsteed Rider in here, so I think we're just going to slam dunk that guy. Big fan and good in the deck. Nykthos is cool, but not really the direction this deck needs. Uh, Acolyte's also cool, but there's not a ton we actually have to ramp into, just the monstrosity on Nessie and Esp. It's not... Uh, absolutely necessary. All right, let's, let's definitely do the Wing Seed Rider. We have so many, so many good targets, uh, or ways to target it, I should say. Yeah, anything else good in here? Acolyte, Goliath, Battle Priest, Valor, they're all fine. All right, Dauntless Onslaught, one of my favorite cards. Uh, Staunch Hearted Warrior, also in here. Very strong card. Let me count how many targeted spells I have first. One, two, three, four, five. I count that. Six, seven. Seven targets already. Um, I really want to take the Staunch Hearted Warrior. 
I feel like with all those buffs we have, that's that's going to be huge. I want to take Time to Feed. I want to take Dauntless Onslaught. I want to take Ordeal. Just so many cards in here I would love to take. I mean, Time to Feed, I guess, is a little bit worse because we actually don't have anything bomby until fairly late, and it's few and far between. So I guess it's really it's Dauntless Onslaught or Staunch Hearted Warrior. And I said we needed creatures. I'm probably not playing this. So, I mean, Dauntless Onslaught by far stronger but staunch hearted is going to give us more consistency with our buffs that we currently have give us more win cons talk myself into it may regret that i don't know i just i really want to make sure that we have enough awesome heroic guys that get huge uh so we can take feral invocation here we can also take hopeful eidolon gives us more heroic I mean, this does Heroic too, I guess, but Hopeful Eidolon's actually a creature, and Bestow is cool. Um, and Life Gain seems like really what this deck wants to do, because we're, we're slowish, so being able to just... I mean, imagine putting a Hopeful Eidolon on a Fleece Man Lion, right? That's monstrosity. What do they do? They have to make me sacrifice them. That's the only way. Let's take the Eidolon. Okay, we can take the Verdict here. We also can take Voyaging Seder for more ramp. Also Colossus of Akros, which is a, an actual win con. Uh, but I don't think we have the ramp to support that. Let's take the Divine Verdict. I like the idea of getting more uh, removal. And Verdict is certainly a playable good one. Uh, Alright, Burnished Heart could help us get our profit, but I think Observant Alcea it is. Just a little bit more what I want to do in this deck. More stuff for uh, Heroic that we currently have. And just otherwise more creatures. Burnished Heart is, is fine though. I, I think that's good too. Okay. Um, Disciple is good. Hopeful Eidolon Dose is probably fine. What's my first cut? Maybe we don't need to main deck the Fade. Uh, this is a 23 card deck, so I would probably play the Hopeful over the Fade main deck. I can always sideboard into that if necessary. Vanquish is cool and all, but I think ultimately unnecessary. And Nylee's Disciple's good too, but well, let's take the Hopeful Eidolon. I like me some Bestow. Alright, so Satessan Griffin's good in here, but we're going to take definitely take the, the Courser. Get nice, nice, efficient guy. Um, here we'll slam the Glare for sideboarding. Okay, Prowler's Helm came around, but I think we actually want the... Well, actually, I mean... Battle Priest isn't that good. I could also take the Volpine Goliath, get another fatty, but no, actually, I, I think we have enough we have enough win cons in here. Definitely have enough win cons. Prowler's Helm gives us additional evasion for our guys that are gonna blow up. So I actually like having one I, I, I really do like having one Prowler's Helm. But this may not be the deck for it, so I'm gonna take the Battle Priest, just in case. So we can take a second Opaline Unicorn, and then we maybe don't even need to play the Unknown Shores, but Double Unicorn seems a bit too clunky. So let's take the Philosopher, just more cheap creatures, just in case. Warden, not that great, but playable. Don't really need the Centaur, we could sideboard the wheel maybe. Griffin's fine. All right. So, a uh, decent looking deck. I like uh, I like some of the synergies in here. Do I need to play the Prophet? Probably not. I can maybe avoid some, uh, some mana base issues if I don't play the Prophet. Let me see what uh, this deck looks like is just straight green and white.
This is 24? Wow. All right. So, yeah, we don't need to play Profit. And that way we don't need to play the Unicorn either. We top out at 5, so uh, I, this is a 17 land deck. We've got some color intensity here. But let's separate out our spells versus creatures. I'm going to play both the Divine Verdict and the Excoriate. Both of these seem a little more useful in here. So, a uh, good amount of win cons. Decent amount of early game. I, yeah, I think the early game we've got is certainly satisfactory. We've got a good game plan, I think. Decent against aggro, too. We've got the Mortals Ardors. I don't want to play 16 lands, though. I, I don't feel comfortable doing that. So, let's really figure out where the weakness lies. I like the Eidolons. All of our Bestow guys I feel comfortable keeping around. Um... Really satisfied with our creatures, actually, in general. I guess Dreamfinder is... I mean, it certainly has enough targets. That's not the issue. It's, do I really want to play it? I think I probably do. How are our spells? Warrior's Lesson, Double Mortals, Ardor, Savage Surge, Last Breath, Divine Verdict, Scory 8, Raised by Wolves. I'm still okay with Last Breath main deck, too. I really... Don't have any issues with that against aggressive decks. Maybe the double battle priest isn't really what we need. We can always sideboard into a second one if we're against that style of aggressive deck. I can always bring in a second battle priest. You know? I can lower the curve slightly because otherwise, I don't know. I really like the rest of what we've got. I'm usually underwhelmed with this card. But this card is going to be super important for us against the red-white decks and, you know, the super aggro. But against everything else, I, I like the way that we're geared already. So let's let's run it like this. 15 creatures is good. Our spell count is good. We have enough ways to win, definitely, with the guys that get huge. Asp, Raised by Wolves. I mean, I am really wanted to try that card out. Fleeceman Line's a great win con. Alright, let's check out our colors. Okay, so we're a lot more white than green, but we need double green, so we might be doing a 9. I guess we could do 10-7. Let me check out our early creatures, though. We really need green early for Fleece Main. We need double green for Oath Sworn, so I think we're actually going to do 9-8. We need to see both colors. Um, overall, a pretty good deck. Uh, it's uh, got a lot of threats. Got some cool, uh, cool cards to try out in it. Yeah, I think this is this is good. I could possibly cut an ardor for the second battle priest, but this is just solely like a blocker. I mean, why don't we just cut the Philosopher for the Battle Priest? I, I guess this serves a better role than this does. This trades may be better, but this, like, actually rewards us more for all the Bestow we have. So let's do that instead. Okay. So 9-8, and uh, yeah, I guess I'll see you round one. We'll see how this deck performs.